Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's birth video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 14 days for today's birth video. Day 10 will take us to the 15th of uh, March. We'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended GFS and ECM ensembles. Being a track of weeks. We'll have a look at the CFSB2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. And uh, that will get us into the beginning of April actually now. So I should get all of that for you in a moment to see that first video in sales our six in UK weather forecast uh, we've also uh, released the EC 30 day forecast as well please like share and subscribe on all of today's videos and content and thank you so much everybody for doing that hope you're having a lovely Tuesday uh, right, okay, so let's start off in the strap. Give the strap watch so I don't, don't want to say too much about this, but just to confirm that the sudden stratospheric warming event that we've been talking about over the uh, past few, uh, uh, what seems like months, doesn't it? But actually, this particular event, we've been talking about it for about a couple of weeks. Um, so uh, just to confirm that has occurred. So this is from Weather is Cool. Uh, this is the zero line just here. As you can see, that the blue line is now underneath the zero line. Therefore, zonal winds have indeed gone into reverse. And that is a technical sudden stratospheric warming. You know, when that happens and is sustained for more than 24 hours, I think it is, um, at 60 degrees north in the stratosphere at 10 hk. That is the classic definition of an SSW, major sudden stratospheric warming event. Um, and putting in the uh, GFS ensembles, these green lines here, you can see that zonal winds are expected to stay in reverse, actually, for the next two weeks, right way out to the very end of the GFS uh, run, which will be into the second half of March now. We see, uh, we, I think about um, 14, 16 days' time, GFS goes out to. And from now to then, the zonal winds uh, stay in reverse there. So uh, a, a very sustained reversal of zonal winds, which might even be the final warming of the strategy, but it'd be very, very early for that. Normally, the final warming and the final reversal of zonal winds typically happens into April, uh, second half of April normally. Um, uh, and it could be that this is the, uh, this is the final warming, this is the final uh, reverse and death of the, the, of the polar vortex. Um, but I think, <coughs> excuse me, I think it'd be very early uh, days for uh, that to be the case. I suspect we'll probably see the zone wing going back into weekly positive territory into uh, the, uh, the, the last stages of March, early April, just for a while, and then we'll get the final warming that will reverse the zone wing. But I say it could be that this is the final uh, warming and uh, final reversal of zone winds at 10 HK. In any case, it's a dramatic event, and uh, we shall see what, if any, tropospheric response we get from this. Remember, tropospheric response normally happens two to three weeks after. Uh, an SSW. So we would be looking for a tropospheric response in the form of northern blocking probably the third or the fourth week of March into the uh, first couple of weeks of April, I would have thought, that four-week window. Uh, we shall keep you posted, we shall keep monitoring, and it's going to be interesting to see what happens, if anything. Uh, right, central temperature is currently sitting at uh, 4.3. Let's have a look at that then. So um, that's uh, 1.4 degrees below the 61 to 99 average. That is provisional to uh, yesterday, the 4th of March. A very chilly start to March 2024. These were GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. The red line is the third year of the air temperature average for crew today. So we're starting off around to a little bit below average with the upper air temperatures at the moment. They're going to be cooling more as we move on through the second week of March and up to the middle part of the uh, month. So maybe a bit of a cold snap opening up there between around uh, the 11th, perhaps. Let's get rid of those blue lines. Between around the uh, 11th here, to, let's say, the uh, 15th 
just there. So in that window, you might see a little bit of a cold snap or another cold snap, given we're starting off quite cold for the month. So you might see another cold snap uh, opening up there. Into the second half of March, we see perhaps signs of... Um, uh, things end a little bit uh, milder, but there is a lot of scatter within that. So we've got cold ensemble members down here, and then we've got mild ensemble members up there. So probably best to leave that alone. So today's wife will be a fair amount of dry weather over the uh, next few days. From the weekend through to next week, though, looks like it's turning more unsettled. So if anything's doing with snow road, not much happening. Getting a bit late now. Um, a snow road really although you can get snow even into april but normally it will be in the form of showers and uh, and, and things like that quite unusual to get like snow events into april though it has happened on occasion temperature anomalies from the 5th to the 13th of march about average not particularly particularly big deviation either way precipitation anomalies from the 5th to the 13th of march drier than normal the latest wind from that from earth no school dot net shows that we've got low pressure in the atlantic and got high pressure over scandinavia so high pressure over scandinavia trying to bring in an easy wind while the low pressure in the atlantic is trying to feed in these uh milder west or southwest winds and we're kind of in a no man's land in between at the moment Right, so let's start going through the chart data then. This is how the latest UK Met Euro run is looking for big night on Friday. High pressure of Scandinavia, low pressure out to the Atlantic, and winds coming up from a southerly or southeasterly direction. So it should be relatively mild the end of the week. More of a southeasterly tilt to wind as we go through Saturday. That will probably have a chill to it, though the temperatures themselves will be relatively mild. And this low could well start pushing up more bands of rain. From the south, looks like quite an unsettled weekend, <laughs> I'm afraid, again, uh, with low pressure, particularly for England and Wales, actually, and Ireland, bringing more uh, rain. Scotland, North East, and probably, say, main dry back, chilly, southeast wind. Into next week, the uh, low pressure slips away to the south, heights begin to rise to the north and the west, so that starts to pull wind properly in from the east, uh, and that, therefore, Looks like it could start bringing some cold air from the east. It's one of the ice bars, but the air is originating from more of a north easterly source. So, um, if that is sustained for long enough, that will start dragging some rather colder temperatures from the east, perhaps. I can't again uh, showing that we're into a southerly southeasterly flow on Friday and into the weekend. Low pressure probably bring more wet weather, especially for England and Wales, but northern half of the country, I would have thought reasonably dry with winds in from the east through to next week that low pressure moves away to the south and the east high pressure of scandinavia pulls the wind in from an east or a northeasterly uh, direction and then high pressure builds over the top of the country bringing mostly dry but probably quite chilly weather through the beginning of next week maybe one or two wintry showers in the southeastern corner the KMA uh, from South Korea, again, looks like that. So, uh, low pressure could well bring a very unsettled spell through to uh, next weekend. And, uh, or the coming weekend, I should say. And then the uh, low pressure sort of shifts away to the south of the east, uh, allowing winds to turn into the east. Only part of next week, looking quite cold through the beginning of next week, before southwest winds start to bring rain and uh, milder temperatures back in through the middle of Middle, through the middle of March, but notice that by the 17th of March, <coughs> excuse me, everybody, by the 17th of March, high pressure is uh, taking over across Scandinavia, or trying to take over across Scandinavia uh, once again. Uh, and then this South uh, GFS Big Dike run is looking. By the way, I don't think the Scandinavian high is particularly related to the current SSW uh, reversal zones. I think it's a little bit too early. Um, for that. So this is probably a response. Well, it's very difficult to say because you get Scandinavian highs and each winter through spring anyway as the Atlantic just weakens and the westerlies just start to weaken down. So spring is our most easterly season and uh, May will actually be uh, on average the most easterly month. But each in March are not uncommon at all. Um, so it might just be, you know, uh, uh, cyclical at the time of the year and whatnot. It could be that Scandinavian high is a response to earlier uh, strap warmings and disruptions of PV. I say very, very difficult always to say whether one thing is directly leading 
do uh, another. But I would say that the current SFW not having any sort of effect with this particular Scaddy High that we're seeing here through the uh, last stages of this week. Uh, sorry, sorry, I've got a tangent, but I just wanted, just wanted to quick get that on the table. Right, so, so the GFS, uh, Big Dyke Rose, look again, high pressure, Scandinavian, low pressure in the Atlantic on um, Friday, bring it win for that Sutherland or South East direction. Into weekend, this low across Northern France probably brings yet more rain into South. Meanwhile, further north, we should say mostly dry, quite cold, easterly winds as well. Those easterly winds are maintained to the beginning of uh, next week. Proper long, but easterly. If this was January, when we had all of that cold air sitting across Northern Europe, we would have <laughs> we would have really known about it. So for cold and snow lovers, you know, it's a case of if only and what might have been as we... <laughs> as we nearly always say, um, with the spring Eastleys and whatnot. Oh, uh, yeah, we've got a proper easy there through the beginning of uh, next week before high pressure takes over. Let's head toward day 10. That will bring mostly dry weather. And we'll start to uh, drag up some milder air from the south as well there by uh, day 10, which is the 15th of March. It's extended with the uh, GFS midnight run. Uh, well, the high pressure doesn't last that long, so it's uh, more unsettled again, but relatively mild with the upper air temperatures, 21st of uh, March. GFS 6 then, again, pulling in that southerly south easterly flow on Friday, and then low pressure moving in from the southwest, bringing quite a bit of wet weather to England and Wales, should be a little bit of a dry side though, further north. The beginning of next week starts pulling an easterly wind, but it's not particularly cold, you see there's no real cold air sitting over the continent, we'll have a chill to it, of course, it's an easterly wind coming off the continent, turn over the North Sea, so it'll feel cold, but it's not a particularly cold uh, easterly, if you get what I mean. Um, into Tuesday, where the easterly wind is maintained once again, and then up towards uh, day 10, lower pressure starts coming in from off the Atlantic. And that begins to bring some uh, wet weather in with it. Through uh, beyond day 10, low pressure is in the ascendancy. So further showers or longer spells of rain to come then. Uh, right at the very end, well, this is like proper spring, actually. High pressure starts moving up from the south right at the very end of the GFS 6, 7, right? And... Um, that will bring up the wind from like the Azores and whatnot. So that could have been to be to up to Celsius, actually, if there is plenty of sunshine in that. So that looks quite pleasant there for the 21st of March. If you enjoyed the video, please do like, share, a long way out, of course. If you enjoyed the video, please do like, share, subscribe. Make sure you check well before doing that. Why not drop a comment? Let's say what you think about this and all of our vids and content. Don't get to tell friends about Gareth Webb. Well, Thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. We need to put on around 65 subscribers to get ourselves to 18.1k. So if you could give us a sub, tell your friends and family to subscribe. We thank you very much for doing that. Okay, uh, GM again. High pressure to the north east, high pressure southwest. Bring bring up wind for the southwest, uh, from southeast, I should say, on Friday. And then into weekend, low pressure probably brings wet weather to England and Wales. Scotland should be reasonably dry. Through the only part of next week, the wind turns into east properly. It's a long fetch easterly, though, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your point of view. There's not much cold air sitting to the east. Heading up to a day 10, low pressure winds starting to try and come in from off the Atlantic, but we have got a ridge sitting to our north and east, trying to fend that off as well. Uh, it looks like we're trying to get back to uh, wetter weather from the Atlantic eventually by day 10 there with the gem. And then the ECM uh, rounding off with high pressure of Scandinavia on Friday, low pressure to our southwest. Up are coming those southeasterly winds into the weekend. Low pressure brings wet weather into the south, while the north has this big blocking area of high pressure from mostly dry, and winds are coming in from a proper easterly direction, though again, there's not much cold air sitting on the continent, so the easterly will have a chill to it, but it won't be especially cold. What might have been a business happening in January, we had all of that very cold air sitting across northern Europe, but it didn't. So we go on um, up toward day 10. High pressure then starts to sink in, over coach. I'd say next week probably looking most dry. So after a wet weekend, it probably turns drier through uh, much of next week. Actually, could be quite pleasant if the wind turns into the south. Um, well, I might, 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 might finally be able to get out onto the garden next week. Wouldn't well, that be nice? Uh, we'll see. That's how you end up by day 10 the ECM. High pressure to our east, low pressure to our, to our west, and up is coming this southerly or southeasterly wind, which should be relatively mild. 
Piss him up, precipitation, four card base. On that, he's Shem Run from Tomestio.com. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, got showery bits and pieces to come over the next few days, but it's about dry weather, really, through to the weekend. And then through the weekend, we've got that low to ourselves, so we start getting some uh, more general rain appearing across Ireland, England, and Wales over the weekend. It could be quite a, a wet, damp, miserable weekend down the south, but north should always be dry. Then we go to those proper east lids, should be only part of the next week. They're not bringing much in way of uh, precipitation with them, though. Uh, and then we're under high pressure, so we dry up to day 10. These are the options on the table within the East um, Ensembles Day 4, Day 10. We know Standard Med Topics gets us to the 15th of March, so we've got 23 members of the East um, Ensembles with high pressure over and south of the northern country, mostly dry and winds coming in coming in from a southerly or southeasterly direction. That includes the control and the operation run 15 with high pressure again towards Greenland and Iceland. Low pressure is to the south and winds coming in perhaps more from an east or northeasterly direction with that one. And then we've got 13 with high pressure just to our east. Low pressure is out to the west. So that will draw up the wind from a southerly direction. So most of the options actually involving a little bit of high pressure there at day 10. Should be reasonably uh, settled, I think. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. Gets us to the 20th of March. 51 members of the ECM ensembles then have high pressure towards Greenland and Iceland. And around that, we bring the wind in from an easterly direction. Again, oh, spring easterlies continue there with uh, the ECM ensembles. CFSB2, finally, meets the 500 millibar high to long is broken down. Into week bids, first week bid takes us from the 5th through to the 11th of March. The uh, coming week has high pressure to our northeast, low pressure to our southwest, and bring up wind from a southerly or a southeasterly direction. Week two, uh, this is a bit different to all of the other model out, but we've seen actually this is the 12th to the 18th of March with low pressure then. Uh, coming in from the Atlantic. So uh, that's a much more unsettled type scenario. We have got some higher pressure up to the northeast. Uh, week three <laughs> will be the uh, 19th to the 25th of March with high pressure around Iceland. Low pressure into the south. Winds will probably be coming in from more of an easterly direction. With that, and the wettest weather will be in the south. And then week four is the 26th of March to the 1st of April. With high pressure around Greenland, Iceland. Trough of low pressure to our northeast. And winds probably coming in from a northerly direction, if anything. Um, now, that could be quite a chilly end to March, start to April type um, period. That might be, but uh, SSW beginning to show a response there. We'll see. Okay, we're done. If you've enjoyed the video, please do like, share, and subscribe. Make sure to show everyone for dear Matt. Why not drop a comment and say what you think about this and all of our videos and content. And don't forget to tell your friends about gas. Well, you thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Right, just tell us happening on the channel tomorrow. Going to have 6 UK weather forward, guys. We've got Strat Watch. Is it episode 17? We're up to it nearly at the end of Strat Watches now, but uh, we've got another installment of Strat Watch to come tomorrow. And we'll be live at 6 with 10 to 14 day. So I should see you live um, for that one. For this video, though, and for today's video, that's all for now. And thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your Tuesday, and bye for now.